ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಯು ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಮೀ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿ ಓಕೆ ವಿ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟೂ ಡೇಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟುಮಾರೋ ಆನ್ ದ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ಲಿ ಕಾಯಿಂಡ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಲಿವ್ ಆ್ಯಟ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಒನ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿ ಟೇಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ರಿಯಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ second is we live in this world as someone who has come in this world from somewhere and will go somewhere <clears throat> and the third is neither we have come nor we go this is the truth but normally spirituality is understood only as the karma kanda satyam vada dharmam chara swadhyayan ma pramalaha ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಧನಮಾವೃತ್ಯ ಪ್ರಜಾತಂತು ಮಾ ವ್ಯವಚ್ಛೇತ್ಸಿ ಮಾತೃದೇವೋ ಭವ ಪಿತೃದೇವೋ ಭವ ಆಚಾರ್ಯದೇವೋ ಭವ ಅತಿಥಿದೇವೋ ಭವ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಧರ್ಮಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಇನ್ ಧರ್ಮಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಡೂಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಫಾಲೋ ಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ because we want something we want to do something or the other see like you all are drivers so the driving rules are applied to you not on me because i don't drive see so as long as i want to do this i want this i want that till then dharma shastra is applied on us and what dharma shastra does it helps us in controlling ourselves from within see when we see the red light we ourselves stop the car doesn't stop automatically we have to stop in the same manner when the discipline is imposed from within it becomes freedom now those of us who wake up early morning at 5 o'clock 4 o'clock and start their uh, life for them waking up early morning is never an issue but those who are told you have to get up early morning and then the problems begin therefore we have two aspects in our life one aspect is we want something to happen and what are that two, two things one is artha and the kama in technical terms we call it eshana ಲೋಕೇಶನ ಪುತ್ರೇಶನ ವಿತ್ತೇಶನ ಡೋಂಟ್ ವರಿ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ಹೇವನ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಸನ್ ಹೂ ವಿಲ್ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಪಿಂಡದಾನ ಓಕೆ ದೆನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಸನ್ ಐ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾರೀಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಗೆಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾರೀಡ್ ಐ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮನಿ ಸೊ ಅರ್ಥ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಅರ್ನ್ ಮನಿ ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಮನಿ ಡು ವಿ ಪುಟ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಸಮ್ವೇರ್ ಆಂಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ದೇ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಎಂಡ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಹೌ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಫ್ ನೋಟ್ಸ್ they are not in hundreds and thousands but they are in millions more and more money there is no end to it no control similarly bhog or the kam unless we have control over ourselves with reference to wealth and indulgence we will be living as animals see ahara nidra bhaya maithurancha samanya etat pashubhi nrunam ಧರ್ಮೋಹಿ ತೇಷಾಂ ಅಧಿಕೋ ವಿಶೇಷ ಧರ್ಮೇಣ ಹೀನ ಪಶುಭಿ ಸಮಾನ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಅಸ್ ಆ್ಯನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ದಿರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ 
ಆಹಾರ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ಆದರೆ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ನಿದ್ರಾ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ದೇನ್ ಭಯ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈಥುನಮ್ ಚ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಇಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡನ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಮೋರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವೈ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಧರ್ಮೋ ಹಿ ತೇಷಾಂ ಅಧಿಕೋ ವಿಶೇಷ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಎ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮ ನ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಡಸ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಈಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ ದ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಸಿ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇವ್ ಡಸನ್ ಫಾಲೋ ದೇನ್ ಆಕ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಧರ್ಮಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಈಸ್ ಮೇಂಟೈನಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಕಂಫರ್ಟೇಬಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗುಡ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಧರ್ಮಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಾಲಿಟಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಸೋಷಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಮೆನಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ನೋಷನ್ ಸೋಷಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಾಲಿಟಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ನೋಟ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋಷಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಸೋಷಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ವ್ಯೂಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಗೀತಾ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಸೋಷಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಐ ಡೂ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಸೀ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಒನ್ ಗೀತಾ ಬುಕ್ ಇನ್ ದೇರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಅಪ್ಸೆಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಎ ಟೀ ಟೋಟಲರ್ ವೈ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸಿ if i am a tea totaler what will be my social work nobody should drink nasha bandi see therefore we should be clear social work has nothing to do with spirituality see? then we come to the third stage and the third stage is we want to know whence this world who am i what for and this happens when we get a kick in our life see i have been doing everything nicely but why this is happening to me and then we start inquiring so karma is for purification of the mind karmani chitta shuddhyartha and how we clear purify our mind wherever you are whenever you are whatever you are be 100% you have heard the mantra so when you are living your life 100% every moment there cannot be any problem in your life see if you ask me what is the uh, message of bhagavad gita in one sentence this is the message wherever you are whenever you are whatever you are be 100% that's it so many things are told in gita karma karma yog then ashtanga yog dhyana yog jnana yog bhakti yog <coughs> bhagavad gita was delivered on the battle front arjun did not do anything of that see then what is the message of gita only this much arjuna was where he was he was on the battle field when at the time of battle as what as a warrior or as a grandson or as a disciple who he was so this confusion created problem in his life see therefore bhagwan also doesn't ask arjun did you get the knowledge no he didn't ask the question his question is uh, has your delusion gone pranastaste dhananjay hey dhananjay your delusion gone and arjuna also doesn't say yes i got the knowledge no he says nashto moha smriti labdha tat prasad atmaya chuta oh lord by your grace my delusion has gone what was the delusion who am i at a given period of time see bhagwan did not do anything he did not tell you fight he told i have explained you clearly now you decide yethe chasi tata guru wise people never make decisions for others our elderly people at home they make decision for others uski shaadi kara do let him suffer why you get involved in his life see therefore 
what is the message arjun you are on the battlefield on the battlefield it is only the warriors who come nothing else in the same manner no applied subjectively where are we we are in the satsang when are we during the satsang therefore what should be we satsangi but instead of remaining satsangi if we become somebody dada dadi nana nani father mother in laws out laws do you think we we'll listen we'll compare suppose i give some uh, one joke about husband and wife and in that suppose i praise see wives are so nice and doing so much of work immediately all the wives will look at their husband see because you are no more listening as a seeker of truth see friends therefore what is the ultimate spirituality is to know who you are that's it there are four topics which are dealt with exhaustively in our scriptures one is this world the second thing is uh, ourselves the third thing is who is god and fourth thing is what is spiritual practice now see and the rule is very simple from the known the unknown is reached now what is known to us this world is known to us and how this world is known oh the world is too bad world is night gold ah no 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 see see this is not a playground no so we start knowing what is the world urdhva moolam adashakam ashvatham prahuravayam exhaustively the world is described and then bhagwan punctures this balloon and he says see na roopam asseha tatho palabhyate nantorna chadi nir sampradishtha don't think this world is really like this now we enter the spiritual field when we start analyzing our own experiences of life that is our new birth and those who cannot learn from the experiences of their own life even sakshat lord shiva comes and tells us it will not help us see friends that is the meaning of guru guru is not an external personality guru is our ability to learn from every passing experience of life and therefore scriptures and satsang gives us the way how to think this is very important for all of us to know we have to learn how to make chapati we have to learn how to make tea coffee i have learned all this thing during this uh, corona two years i have conducted many experiments on me my guide was youtube how to make dosa then how to make sabji and all kinds of things two years i enjoyed i don't know enjoyed or suffered but i did something <laughs> so everything we have to learn but when it comes to thinking neither our parents told us how to think they themselves don't know nor the teachers tell us how to think see friends everything is required to be learned taught but when thinking comes we don't uh, know that it is also required see friends therefore we come across so many people common question swami ji whenever i sit for meditation mind is too disturbed what should i do don't do meditation relax no but my guru told me do meditation then do meditation more than the thoughts come then don't do meditation we know only one thing complain therefore one of our mahamantra is living at zero complaint level 
the day you stop complaining about anything in this world he has started real advanced spiritual practice complain is a reaction of the mind it is not response suppose a, a husband complains he is miserable because of wife there is his complaint now you tell me what will be his approach to life his approach to life will be try to improve the wife because he is miserable because of wife try to improve the wife this is called as ashakya anushthan <laughs> see and the net result is we remain frustrated throughout life therefore remember this thing we have to respond to every situation and not react see now what is the response if you are disturbed because of something or somebody find out what who is disturbed disturb and before that what is a disturbance now i am taking a deeper and deeper be very attentive when we talk about thoughts i am disturbed too many thoughts come please define a thought we only talk how will you define a thought and then we want there should not be thoughts in the mind now you it is something like this i go to the doctor and say doctor when i open my eyes i can see everything it is not a problem when i go to ent person i say my ears are perfect very good it is not a problem so seeing by eyes is not a problem hearing by ears is not a problem thinking by mind why it is a problem where the thoughts should come should they come in the nose you blow them out think we have to stop complaining about the thoughts then start inquiry about the thoughts be attentive without a seed a sapling or a plant cannot grow see we have got a mango seed we sow it and in in the soil tree comes then we have got an apple uh, seed we sow that tree comes do we call them as uh, this is the earth plant we call it a mango tree because the seed sprouts into tree not the earth how important it is to understand see so without the seed no plant can grow exactly what is the seed from which the plant of thoughts grow then you will come to know that the seed from where the tree of thoughts grows that seed is called as mr somebody now do this experiment we are learning a real advanced spiritual practice i am not telling you go to temple and matha teko take the mala and go on doing the japa i am not telling you that practical let us do this experiment of spirituality play we are playing spirituality spirituality not becoming serious see now we we'll start you are sitting perfectly all right don't change your posture and everything now let us play inside ourselves you become husband or wife and observe what thoughts are coming stop the second experiment now you become parents or children and see what thoughts are coming stop 
stop. Now remain as Mr. Nobody. Experiments over. Now let us analyze. When we became husband or wife, the thoughts are pertaining to wife or husband respectively. When we became children or parents, the thoughts were pertaining to parents or children respectively. When we remain as nobody, no thoughts. I have not done anything, you have also not done anything. Only adjusted the focal length. <coughs> Go back to Arjun in the first chapter. Katam Bhishma Maham Sankhe Dronam Chamadu Sudhana Ishubhi Pratiyot Chami Pujar Havari Sudhana Oh Lord, how can I kill Dronacharya, my Guru? How can I kill the Vishmacharya, uh, my grandfather? So who had the thoughts? It is the disciple had the thought. It is the um, grandson has the thought. Arjuna had no thoughts. We have no worries. We have no problems. We create problems by becoming somebody and that becoming somebody is not real. Get this point across. One example I have given n number of times. Again I am telling you, if you can catch it, it will change your whole life. One man, with reference to his father, he is a son. The same man, with reference to his wife, he is a husband. The same man, with reference to his son, he is a father. Has the man become three? And who is miserable? It is the son is miserable because of the Hitler father. It is the husband is miserable because of a Mahakali. And it is the father is miserable because of the terrible monster son. Man is not disturbed. When my father died, what happened to me, the son? Nothing happened. Because there is nothing like son. When my wife died, what happened to me? Nothing. And we are all suffering. And who is suffering? The one who doesn't exist. Our condition is like what? Like a bird. Goes and stands in front of a mirror. And then looks at the mirror and the reflection. Oh, this fruit is there. Go and start pecking. Let me see. Where is he? He goes behind the mirror. Oh, it's not there. I think he has run away. Again he comes in front. Again it is there. Oh God, what should I do? Now, let me do Dharma Shastra. Uh, do the charity, go to the temple, do the japa, and do meditation, and do pranayam, do yoga, do asanas. And after everything is done, again he opens the eyes. Oh God, he's still there. I think I have to do more spirituality. Then I want to give some charity. I have given. Again I see, still there. That bird may do anything the reflection in the mirror will not disappear. If this is clear, in the same manner, our body identification, you cannot get rid of. We are all living as body. Now what we have to do, I understand, we have to live not as the body, but we have to live through the body. And how to live? Wherever you are, whenever you are, whatever you are, be hundred percent. So if you are in front of your father, and your father is old, normally, 
Because in this country it is possible that the father is younger than the son, therefore I am telling you that. So, the father is old and you have to talk to him. What is the best way to deal with the father, old one? Never argue with anything. Whatever they say, say yes. After two minutes they will forget and you are relaxed. See? This is the best way to live as a father. So, you are doing Karnataka. Then you are in front of your son. He will come and start asking you money, money, money. Yes, yes, I will go differently. We will do it, we will do it. Never do it. Relax. But you are not telling the main thing. When the husband is in front of the wife, what should he do? Oh, it is the simplest one. When she is talking, he should keep quiet. When she is quiet, he should not talk. You have learned all spirituality. What is the net result? Net result is you have learned that thoughts come to that person who doesn't exist. See? One girl came and asked me this problem. Swamiji, you know I am divorced. I say, yes, I know. I have come for something. I said, I am not going to marry you. No, 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 not like that. <laughs> Uh, my mother told, go and ask Swamiji, so what is the problem? In our house there is some function and uh, I am not allowed to attend that function because I am single. But you know, my husband, only I am divorced, he is not dead, he is still there. What should be done? Her question is, after divorce, the girl becomes widow or not? Then I told, I have studied all the Vedas. Nowhere in the Vedas this issue is tackled. <laughs> when a divorce happens, who dies? Think, friends. And who are miserable? This dumb husband and wife who don't exist. So what is the spiritual practice? Come to know. Whatever we have given importance, that becomes the cause of thoughts. And we have given importance. Nobody has given importance. For example, if somebody is very much obsessed with cleanliness, he will be miserable everywhere he goes. Why is he so dirty? Why is he so dirty? So if we have given importance, we have to devalue. Nobody can do it for us. Now, now what we have given importance to? We have given importance to things and beings. See? And therefore, if you walk or walk in your own houses, walk in wardrobes, you get lost. Where I am? So many pathetic saris are hanging and once you go in the chakra view, you cannot come out. Like uh, ekal, that, uh, see, he gets lost. But keep on accumulating and accumulating, there is no end to it. Why? Because this world we have taken as real. Now be attentive. This is very, you know, catch 22. There cannot be any option, reflection will happen in the mirror. Similarly, there cannot be any option, there will be body identification. You cannot live without body identification. And the problem is body identification. Now what is to be done? Now again come back to the mirror. The bird stands in front of the mirror and we also stand in front of the mirror. The, what is the difference between two of us? The bird takes the reflection as real. We also see the same reflection, but we don't take it as real. Therefore, we use it, see, for putting the dot com. Many mirrors in India, they, have got, they are all Sobhagyavati. 
They remove it, put it there only. It remains there only. <laughs> See? So, we look at the mirror, but we don't take the reflection to be real. But the bird takes it real. And therefore, he suffers. Exactly the same way. We all have to live with body identification, but don't take it too serious. See, friends, then how to do that? Same thing, Mahamantra. Wherever you are, whatever you are, whenever you are, be 100%. See? In one place I went, um, one old Dadaji, these grandparents, they are so much attached to their grandchildren. Because of that, they suffer. Keep a distance and remain happy. All the time sticking to them, no good. So, when I went to their place, and um, uh, Swamiji, how are you? I said, I'm fine. Have you seen that Sri Krishna serial? I said, I have seen the original one. Why will I see the serial? No, uh, whenever I see that serial, Sri Krishna, I am reminded of my grandson. From the sublime to the ridiculous. <laughs> By looking at your useless grandson, you should think of God. But you are seeing Krishna there and thinking of grandson. How much more we get buried in the samsara. And then we become a problem to ourselves and we become a problem for others. See, friends, it's very important for us to understand this. Therefore, we have lived our life sufficiently. Like, you know, some people write us. Today only one person wrote, Swamiji, my son, he has uh, you know, completed his Gurukul and he uh, was studied also. Now, uh, what I should do? Now, the child is not two days old. He has completed his schooling. So, what he has to do, let him do. No, I want him to become a doctor. You may want, but he doesn't know anything about that, no interest. But we get so much involved, involved, involved. Spiritual life is, don't get involved in anybody's life beyond limits. See. One example here only happened a few years before. One girl, I knew her when she was class 7, class 8. Now she is married and all that. When she was carrying for the second time, I happened to be there, so she came to meet me. And we had a dinner, and she says, Swamiji, I want to walk with you a little bit. I said, come. She was carrying maybe about even eight months. So she started crying, walking, and putting her head on my shoulder, crying. I said, look here, don't spoil my clothes, okay? Cry from a distance. Then after her crying was over, I said, if your that attack of crying is over, now tell. She says, Swamiji, I told my mother, Go back to India, I don't want you here. And I left for the office. So she is also crying, I am also crying. I said, Jugal Bandi, very good, continue. See? Then she told, Swamiji, she is with me for last three months. Every day we begin only with one topic. How my brother's wife is bad. Is it for that you have come here? Should I go and kill her? Is there any other topic or no in the world? She said, I got fed up. And finally I told, you better get out, I don't want you. Friends, be attentive. When the children have to scold the parents, don't think children are happy. They are more hurt than the parents. What is the reason? Because we get too much involved in this world. See, friend, don't get too much involved. Thus far, not further. And because of this, you'll see many houses, 
This is one of the biggest problem. Therefore, real spiritual life is what? Limit your involvement in the world and also in relations. Again, go back to Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna's question was not killing somebody. Arjuna's question was indirectly. If it is your grandfather, if it is your guru, I can kill. But how can I kill my guru and my grandfather? See? This is how that somebody should be corrected. Don't get involved too much in anybody's life. We have destroyed our life. Let them destroy their life. What have we achieved as parents or elderly people? What we have achieved? Nothing. Same tamaku, same chuna, ragdo or cow. See, friends. Therefore, real spiritual life is start working on your mind. See, three places we get entangled. One is body level. Whole life living by the body, for the body, on everybody. First. Second thing is, we keep on spending our life only fulfilling our desires. Balastavat krida saktaha, tarunastavat taruni raktaha, vruddhastavat chinta saktaha, parame brahmani kopina raktaha, bhajagovindam bhajagovindam. Whole life we are spending only on fulfilling our desires. But have we looked within, have we really attained fulfillment in life? Because we are not living intelligently, mechanically, dumb. See, friends. Therefore, when we recognize this, living as a body, we will be caught up in the world and the relations. Then, we live only for fulfilling the desires. It can never be a complete project. See. And then, the desire fulfillment ultimately matures into greed. Bhagavan Sri Krishna Bhagavad Gita. Trividham narakasthedam dwaram nashanam atmanaha kama krodhastatha lobaha tasmad etar trayam tyajet. Desire, anger and greed are the three gateways to hell. In Mumbai, in one class, I was talking to children. One child asked this question. Swamiji, why there are three gateways to hell? I said, because it's too much of a rush. See, if you go to the airport, first class, only one counter. And economy, so many of them. See, too much of a rush. Is it? Yes. Then how many counters for the heaven? Only one counter. Why? Hardly anybody wants. All the time worried and buried in this world. How much more you want? How much more? Therefore, real spiritual practice begins. The body identification, this world becomes real. Desires, it can never be fulfilled. Greed is a catch. When we rise above the three, then we start working on the mind. A real spiritual life begins when we start working on our mind. What we are doing, we are working by our mind. Many of you must be the victims of yoga. Isn't it? So what do yoga students do? They work by the body and they work on the body. Working by the body as you are working, earn your bread and butter. Working on the body, we go for a walk, we do exercise, we lift the weight to put it down, we run to come back. This is not for earning money, but we are working on the body. This we understand. Working by the body and working on the body. Now let us come to the mind. We are working by the mind. 
we have never worked on the mind. Now working by the body we understand and working on the body we understand. Now try to understand what is working by the mind and what is working on the mind. See, when we go to the doctor, doctor will tell, now look here, you have become sufficiently old, now uh, reduce your food habits and go for a walk and do some exercise. That is working on the body. In the same manner, when we enter the real spiritual life, we have to start working on the mind. So first we have to understand what is working by the mind and what is working on the mind. Working by the mind is default settings. Which are the default settings? We have got opinion about everything. We have got suggest suggestion to include into God. We can make decision for others. See, default settings. This is how we have developed our habits. Anywhere we go, we have got some suggestion to give somebody. See, friends, this default involvement in the world must be withdrawn. For that, our mantra is beautiful. Dekho, suno, mat bolo. Whatever we see, we have got a comment. Whatever we hear, we have got a comment. These reacting, responding, giving comment on everything in this world, in every experience is our default settings. I should not say, but our neighbor's grand um, daughter-in-law is far better than our daughter-in-law. Are Maharani? When you know, I should not say, why don't you keep your mouth shut? We can't. Default settings. See? So we have to start working on the mind. Now what is working on the mind? Instead of talking about the too many thoughts and disturbance in our mind, let us try to understand how the thoughts are born. And this we have to learn from our own experiences. You cannot transfer the experience. You have to have your own experience. Can we tell somebody, hey, I have taken food, it is pretty good, don't worry, I have already taken You don't have to take, hurry. He has to have his own food. Experience cannot be transferred. You have to have your own. And therefore, now you start working on it. See? Therefore, according to my understanding, real spiritual practice is when we have trained ourselves to learn from every passing experience of our life. Even if you do this one simple thing, which I know you will not do it, but even then I keep on telling. Make a nice copy, give a title to that copy, what I have learned today. And every day, one line you write, what you have learned today. <coughs> but next day onward, dito, 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 no, 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 no. You have to learn something new every day. By the time you have completed one year, you would have learned 365 things. Those who learn from the experience of, of their life, they grow wise. And those who do not learn from the experiences of their life, they grow old and otherwise. Old, otherwise people have nothing except complaints. See? See? Now tell me what is the contribution of we, I am old. What is my contribution that I have grown old? Nothing. It is poor earth running around the sun and my age is growing. And what an arrogance about it. See, friends, even the trees grow. Therefore, we have to learn from every experience. Now what we have to learn? Number one, 
whatever we have given importance that alone become the source of disturbance one example i'll tell you this happened in pune many years before i went to somebody's house for a tea or coffee in pune if you get tea and coffee you are lucky pune you normally don't get anything even a glass of water they will say oh, you must have brought your water bottle is it <laughs> pune is known for that so when i went their granddaughter was there and uh, the grandmother said swami ji she knows the 15 chapter of gita very well i said very good you want to chant she said swami ji may i get my friend i said get no problem so she went next door and got her friend two of them sat together and chanted urdhamulamada shakam ashwatham very beautifully now between the two of them her friend was matchless so perfect not even one single mistake she was so cool calm quiet closed her eyes hands together and chanted not one mistake and the granddaughter of this grandmother because not knowing perfectly well naturally when i saw this after it was over now this girl who chanted perfectly well i got up and i hugged and i said hey you are a genius very well keep it up immediately the grandmother got up and told that girl Go, go to your house. Now your mummy is calling you. Go. And physically, she was thrown out of the house. Then I knew what was the problem. Then I started glorifying that dumb granddaughter. <laughs> Now see, for me, children are children. But for that lady, my granddaughter. Now who is miserable? This grandmother is miserable. Not the lady. if we can understand this principle friends then we are working on the mind see and we get so much involved see i suffer a lot because of this you go to so many houses they will be having this now all children are same dumb what is there to see beta uh, you please chant swami ji dikha jara geeta and then oh, i will not do i know no no please chant please chant you know you are very good boy and then mother herself start chanting tame eva mata tame eva pita tame eva. she chants completely that too also wrong and then she see how nicely chanted who see my daughter my ram 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 get out of that commotion in your life then you are working on the mind see friends when we start working on the mind we come to our spiritual heart when we are living below the spiritual heart ahara nidra bhaya maithunancha below the spiritual heart ahara nidra bhaya maithunam four things see and when we come to the mind then we start working on the mind then you discover many new things this is how i discovered what is the genesis of thought once i went to um, some place on the banks of narmada ji and uh, when we were going there was a lot of mud so i used the wooden sandals so i took them in my hand and without the shoes i was going through quite deep maybe up to ankle deep mud somehow i went and in between sometimes some thorn has gone i can't do anything now so everything muddy so somehow i crossed went to the ashram where i had to go and after that was oh, then i wash my feet and all then i forget forgot about it after two days the leg started the foot started giving pain then one of my friend he was a doctor there He said, "Swami, why are you limping?" I said, "I don't know. Yar, something has happened to my foot." He said, "Let me see." He saw. He said, "Oh, there is one thorn has gone. There is the swelling, and it has become red, 
and it has become tender. If I touch, it will pain more. I said, yes, it is paining. He said, what to do? He said, nothing great. I'll remove the thorn. It will be all right. He removed the thorn. I said, medicine? He said, no medicine required. There is natural healing of the foot. Only let no uh, foreign material should go, so he put some kind of a stick pa uh, pad. N nothing should go. That day I discovered this principle. Thorn is a foreign body. When it has gone in the foot, the tissue of the foot started reacting. And the reaction created tenderness, pain, redness, swelling. And when that foreign body was removed, <coughs> everything in due time cooled down. Now apply this to your own mind. When a foreign body enters the mind, there will be reaction in the mind. There will be swelling of the mind. There will be tenderness of the mind. There will be pain in the mind. That phenomena is called as desire or a thought. This we can understand. A thorn has gone. We can remove the thorn. But how do things enter the mind? See, suppose I like this girl. Has she entered in me? How it has entered? Suppose I dislike that person. How that person has entered in me? See. Therefore, entry of the world in our mind is like our entry in the dream in the form of a reflection. So it is an entry without entrance. See, friends, and how the worldly things and beings enter our mind, come back to the same grandmother and granddaughter. For that grandmother, my granddaughter, Meaning, whenever we give value and importance to anything in this world, that thing has entered in your mind. See? Otherwise, why a boy will fall in love with a girl and vice versa? That boy must have seen thousands and hundreds and girls everywhere. But all of them didn't enter in his mind. But one dumb girl, because he is equally dumb, he looked at it. I have come to the temple. And at the same time, she has also come to temple. Maybe it is God's will that we should get married. And God has got better things to do. Now he starts working on that event and creates an imaginary situation, see, this is how whenever we give importance to anything or anybody in this world, that thing or that body enters in our mind and after the entry of that thing or body in the mind, that swelling on the mind is called desire. See, Maharaj, We have to go deep into it. Therefore, for such such sangha, you will never get crowds. Because here you have to think. Oh God, you know, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, this is good. How long are we going to remain in KG1, KG2? That is all required. But whole life only in KG1. See, I asked her, hey, what are you doing these days? Swamiji, I am in KG1. 
But 30 years before also you told me you are engaged, you are now also I am engaged. Why? I like that miss. See friends, in the same manner, Nachiketa tells in Kathopanishad, Anyatra dharmat, Anyatra dharmat, Anyatra asmat kruta kruta, Anyatra bhutacha bhavyacha, yat tat pashasi tadvada. Enough of dharma, 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 enough. Enough of cause and effect, cause and effect. Enough of when will I realize? How much time it takes to realize the self? Many people ask all this kind of question. One lady asked me in Delhi, Swamiji, don't make a fun of me. Please tell me, how far I have come in realization? I said, stand properly. I said, up to knees you have come. Ab you aur hai upar. What can you talk? See, friends, I'll give you one simple example. You will get the answer from yourself. I'll not tell anything. You will get the answer. How much time it takes, how much efforts is required for a husband to be a man? Man can become the husband. Husband can never become a man. Why? He is already a man. He became husband. Exactly the same way. We are divine. We became miserable. Therefore, one of our mantra is, Na kuch pana, na kuch khona. You will not become divine. You are divine. You don't have to go to Vaikuntha. No. Here and now. See, my friends. Therefore, instead of complaining about the thoughts and disturbance, everything, start working on the mind. Working on the mind. And this is the working. Whatever we have given importance to, that becomes the source of disturbance in the mind. Like, you know, I get, I get up in the morning and the first thing, I want a cup of tea. Great importance given to it. So wherever I go, I request my host to keep one water kettle, boiling water, and a um, deep, deep tea. That's all, nothing more. So when I get up in the morning, the alarm starts. Tick, 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 tick. And if I don't get tea, I am disturbed. Because I have given importance. See, exactly the same way to whatever thing, to whatever person, we have given importance, they become the source of disturbance in our mind. We have to work on the mind. And once we take this as the spiritual practice, the real spiritual practice is when we start working on our mind. See? So first thing I told you this. Now we go next. Our mind has to go through various stages. Or I'll describe what our mind is. This comes in Yoga Shastra. First is called as Kshipta. Kshipta means Kshipa, Kshepane, throw away. So our mind is thrown in time, space and object. Mind runs from one object to another object. Then the mind runs from one place to another place. Then the mind runs from one time to another time. If you just observe this, whenever we talk, these are the three parameters on which we speak. See? When I was in Houston space, that evening when we were having a talk, time. See? That hall was so lovely, object. 
So you remove these three parameters, time, space and object, try to talk. And you know the fun, time, space and object, these are the projections of our mind. When the mind is enfolded, as in deep sleep, that time, where are we? When are we? And what are we? Three things. In deep sleep, are we inside the body or outside the body? Inside the house or outside the house? Inside America or outside America? The space has disappeared. Then is it 1922 or nine, uh, 2022 or 1942? Time has gone. That time, whether I am a man or a woman, young or old, beautiful or awful, is gone. But we are still there. So it is because of me they have existence. I am not because of them. And therefore, the first thing that happens to the mind, kshipta, is keeps on running in time, space and object. And for this one practice, I will tell you, I am sure you will never do it. Practice is, do not talk about your past to anybody on any topic. You are working on the mind. Old people like me, they don't understand. Youngsters are concerned about their future. No, only that I am. If I have got peanuts in my pocket, what can I distribute? Chocolates. Peanuts only. So for old person like me, only past. So what will I do? I will take out that bandara and start. Jab hum jawan thi, who cares? See, one elderly man, he is no more, he got Padma Bhushan, very nice person, very good friend of mine. Recently he died, maybe about a, six months or one year before. In Varanasi, we used to have regular satsang. <coughs> one day he asked me, Swamiji, you are very um, strongly mentioning, don't talk about past. If we don't tell about our past, how our children will know? I said, then talk. He said, no, I want to know. Because when you are emphasizing so much, there must be some reason. I said, look here, uh, my straight attention is on the truth. Nothing here and there. Then, now tell me, past belong to whom? To you or to the body? Your body was a baby. Your body became teenager. Your body became middle age. You are the same. So when we talk all the time about our past, unknowingly, our body identification is intact. And all the problems are only because of body identification. And that is the reason we want to go to sleep, even in the satsang. So that is no problem. Therefore, if we want to get rid of the impact of time, space and object, try this simple technique. Your mind will not be kshipta. Your mind will be at peace. See? Nothing to do, nowhere to go. Relax. Then, the mind is also vikshipta. These are called as the manobhumika. In Yoga Shastra this comes. Vikshipta means we are obsessed with something. Visheshena kshipta. Some kind of obsessions. It should be like that, it should be like that. See? And such obsessed people are the most miserable and they make others miserable. See? Obsession about anything is bad. Kshipta, vikshipta. Third is mudha bhumika. Mudha is what dull-witted. 
not able to understand anything. Bhagavan Shankara writes in his commentary, there are four types of students. One is the Uttam Adhikari, the best one. In one go he is clear through, no problem. Second is um, Madhyam Adhikari, he has to struggle. The third one is Adham Adhikari, he doesn't understand anything, like a furniture. And the fourth is Adhama Adham, he understands exactly opposite. Teacher is the same. See? Because Mudha Bhumika, absolutely dull witted. Okay. So these are the three Bhumikas. We are the victims of these three Bhumikas, then we are a samsari. Then a sadhaka is born, that's what I am telling you. Then Ekagra Bhumika. Ekagra Bhumika means what? It is not Ekagra means normally what we understand that we take a thread cut it and salivate it and make it hard and then put it into the needle of the eye and then, no, 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 that is not Ekagrata. Ekagrata is when our mind is available to us whenever we want, for whatever purpose we want, for whatever length of time we want, mind is 100% available to us. That freedom of Availability of the mind is called a chitta ekagrata. See? When we thus start working on the mind, then one day we will come to know body doesn't live life. It is the mind which is living. See? This also I have learned. Sometime, somewhere in my toe, there was some kind of growth. So my doctor friend told, Swamiji, I'll operate. I said, okay, operate. Then went to his place. He asked me to sit on the chair, put my foot on the stool. And then he gave local anesthesia after 15 minutes. Then he said, now I'll start. Don't worry. I said, all right. He started. Gave a nice cut on the big toe. Then dug inside and took out whatever he wanted. And after that was removed, he said, Swamiji, congratulations, it has come out completely. No remnants left behind. Then he was st stitching and blood was coming. Everything I was looking at it. And I thought, oh, I have become a great yogi. I have conquered for half an hour. And after half an hour, oh God, it is too painful. That day I discovered. During that local anesthesia operation, the toe was in meditation. Mind was not allowed to enter that area. The moment the mind enters, the pain begins. Exactly the same way. Anything which enters our mind is a source of misery. And how the things enter our mind? Because we have invited, we have given importance to that thing. If we have given importance, we have to devalue, my friends. Nobody can do that. See? Then we are really walking spiritual path. Otherwise, we deceive ourselves the most in our life. During these two years of Corona festival, I call it as a festival because everybody was involved. When it is a Diwali, Diwali is a festival for everybody. Corona was a festival. So in this festival, what I don't know you learned, but I learned definitely. We require minimum things for living happily. See? Otherwise, so many things we gather, gather, gather. Thus, when you start learning from every experience of your life, slowly, world will stop entering in your mind. See? Then, Bhagavad Gita, second chapter. Ya nisha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagarti sayyami yasyam jagrati bhutani sa nisha pashyato munehe 
पश्यतो मुने हे ही हु इज अवेकन टू दिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड एक्सपीरियंस ही इज एबल टू परसीव द डिवाइन प्रेजेंस इन एंड थ्रू एवरीथिंग एंड बीइंग एंड दिस रिलेटिव वर्ल्ड इज ऑफ नो कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस टू हिम बिकॉज ही इज अबाइडिंग इन द ट्रूथ that abundance in the truth while we are alive is spiritual life see miseries will come to everybody but we are all miserable by choice you refuse to be miserable even god cannot make you miserable but we cooperate with the misery aage a jao a jao miserable no insult the misery misery when this freedom we have attained then we are working on the spiritual path otherwise the same thing outside also beggar inside also beggar see you know all our gods if you have seen them do you know the meaning of that enough how much will you ask if you don't stop give one we straight away tell him god other than you we want everything mm. see go and say he knows what is good for us like the mother knows what is good for the child child will not understand the child doesn't like to take the medicine but the mother knows it is required so give medicine exactly the same way if you are really devotee of the lord we go and only surrender o oh lord may i remain ever surrender to you that's it and you go and again and again and therefore longer the namaskar longer is the list on go 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 and you get or ek bhul gaya fir how much will you ask surrender yourself at his feet he has taken care of us till date he will take care further but ahankar vimudhatma karta hamidi bannate we feel that we are living our life on our own we can't even decide whether we can breathe next or not therefore real devotion to the lord is total surrender surrender means sir under not moving with the arrogance give it a try you are on the right track tomorrow also we have a talk yes. here only yes, okay if you want to come and suffer you are welcome <laughs> om purnamadaha purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम